Good afternoon and welcome to another one of Tim's Tech Talks here at Venom Motorsports Canada. So today we are having a look at the EVAP system on an X22 and we're going to start by having a look at the gas tank itself. So when you look at the gas tank you'll notice of course that you have a keyed gas cap and an important point to note with this is that when you're looking down into the tank area the only other fitting in the tank is an overflow. So there's a little overflow hole right here in case you do indeed overfill the tank and that overflow will drain back down into the tank itself. Once you close up this gas tank, this whole system is now completely sealed. And the reason for this is to ensure that none of the gaseous vapors from the gas tank are allowed to expand and discharge freely into the environment. So the only time hydrocarbons are going to be leaving this tank in an uncontrolled method or manner is when you're filling. After you fill, there's a really tight seal here that completely seals the tank off and prevents that from occurring. Now, in the old days, and on some smaller displacement bikes, you'll see that this cap actually has a vent built into it which means then that it would allow atmospheric pressure to flow in, come on top of the fuel under normal conditions, and if the pressure inside the tank, because of course it's a hot tank, you know, it's black in color, nice warm sunny day, you're going to produce a positive pressure inside the tank, the older uh, styles or designs would have vented that excess pressure out. And again, in both cases, we would have been venting hydrocarbons to the atmosphere, we don't want to do that. So how do we cure that problem? How do we get around it? Well, engineers developed an EVAP system and what that does is it takes the hydrocarbons that normally would have been vented from the gas tank and recycles them back into the engine through this charcoal canister. So when you look at the canister, the canister is located right here in this area on these two clips. Now I've pulled it forward so we can all have a really good look at it. So it looks just like a black plastic canister. Inside is filled with activated charcoal. And what happens here is, if you follow this line back, this line scoots all the way up top to what's called a one-way check valve that you can see right up in here. And the one-way check valve allows gases to flow from the gas tank back into the charcoal cylinder and just in case you didn't get a chance to really see that I'll try and get the camera up here this is what that check valve looks like it's this guy right here so that's the check valve exhaust gas pardon me gases then flow from the tank through the check valve and into the charcoal canister now the next question is going to be well when does that happen it only happens when the bike is running. So when the bike is running, a negative pressure is induced in the canister from this vacuum line that you see right here. So you'll see on the canister there's two vacuum lines. They join up right here and go in on the right hand side of the carburetor. And I'll show you that in a moment so you know where the connection is made. These lines then produce a negative pressure that's experienced inside the canister that again produces a negative pressure here in this line that goes up <clears throat> to the check valve. This then causes the hydrocarbons that are built up in the top of the tank to be siphoned into this canister through the canister and then back over into the carburetor and they're burnt. So what this does then is it ensures at all times that none of the hydrocarbons inside the gas tank can just simply float off into space and contaminate our environment. It also means that when a positive pressure is produced inside the tank, so you've parked the bike outside on a nice hot sunny summer's day, the hydrocarbons under pressure will flow by themselves through that check valve and then come right back here into the canister. So at all times, you're never going to vent hydrocarbons from the tank. Now, how can this affect your performance? 
Under normal applications, not at all. But if these lines become constricted or kinked over, then yes, it can produce some problems. Now, where will this happen? Typically, this will occur on the other side, and I'm going to show you uh, the condition that produces it. And it's simply a function of people being so keen with tie wraps that they simply use tie wraps a little in the extreme. They might kink the line over or they might use the tie wrap on it so tight, or a zip tie if you like, so tightly, so snugly, that it cuts off the flow. When you do that, then you can have problems like, uh, I'm driving down the road, my bike seems fine. I pull up to a stop sign and my bike stalls out. What's weird is that the bike will not restart. And of course I walk the bike home for a little while, try it again in my yard and it starts up right away. This is because pressure has equalized in the system and allowed flow to occur. If these lines become plugged or obstructed, what will occur is the flow of gasoline will be restricted at very low idle. And of course cause the stalling problem. In the old days, I would have said, oh, just go get yourself a new gas cap. But these days, no, you should never have to do that. So what you're looking for are restrictions or kinks in the EVAP system on your bike. Get those squared off and your bike will purr perfectly. Now, when we have a look at the bike and at the carburetor, I want you to see exactly where the line is fed back into the carb. And it's this line right here. So when we look at the carburetor, this is the line that is going to be producing the negative pressure from the carburetor for the evac system. And there's nothing wrong here. The problem typically occurs up here. So you'll notice in this area we have frame, we have a variety of wires, and of course we have this suction line from the carburetor to the evac system. Typically what will occur is that a zip tie is used in this area and if it's zipped up a little too tightly that's where you're going to get a restriction to flow as soon as that happens you're going to have the funny idle conditions so please just take a moment if your bike is experiencing any of these problems check and ensure that all of those lines are free and if they are you'll have no problems if not just snip off you know the uh, zip tie that's overly tightened Put a new one on to hold the wire just snugly in place. It doesn't have to be super tight. This is particularly true for these vacuum lines in your EVAP system. So enjoy your bike. Have a great day. Enjoy the ride, my friends. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.